vascular access in elderly, how it is different. So uh, we know common access is double lumen, jugular catheter, fistula and graft. These are the main accesses and how they are relevantly different uh, for elderly person that is what I am presenting here. So if you see uh, in the first slide what I want to highlight is Indian population is increasing and this is in uh, May 2015 then the average life expectancy in this year has increased by five years uh, in the uh, as from the government. If you see this is the recent epidemiological study and it shows 17 percent of the population has CKD. So I mean it's uh, really uh, horrifying to see the numbers. So there's so much of elderly people who are going to suffer from chronic uh, kidney disease and ultimately going to land up in dialysis. So we are definitely going to see more and more elderly people reaching di uh, dialysis. So this is one Indian study, only one Indian study I could find from Pune where they have seen these elderly patients more than 65 year age group where they have commented on survival, vascular access and um, of these patients. So mean age of 72 years and median survival of at least two years and uh, more than 40 percent patients survive for two years. So that means these patients should be offered dialysis in that age group also and they will have a meaningful life and obviously dialysis means vascular access so and this is also this year study two months back published from germany where they have given data on more than 80 year age group prevalent population so even in very elderly patients are on dialysis and they are doing well and the vascular access in this study they have what we can see is 31 that is 82 percent patient had fistula and eight percent had graft and 10 percent were on catheters and this chart here is showing that the patients who came for more than three months with the nephrologist before starting dialysis definitely had a survival advantage. So what is the problem in these elderly patients? Why is the access different? So they have definitely comorbid factors. Comorbid, these patients may have a poor cardiac function, they may not be able to lie down, they have, may have orthopedic problems, the vascular access formation may be difficult. They have atherosclerotic vessels, very common and will suffer from steel syndrome. They will have bleeding tendency, they will be on uh, antiplatelet agents or oral anticoagulants. They have limited life expectancy from comorbidities, so they may not want to have dialysis or they, would, uh, they may not survive enough for the the access to mature before they reach the stage of dialysis. They may not be motivated enough, the relatives especially. In our scenario, we see a dial patient, elderly patient requiring dialysis means that at least one of the family members should be dedicated enough to get the patient to the dialysis unit and look after him at home and at, at the unit. So de uh, the motivation of relative and social support, high risk of infection and patient preference. Maybe the patient will say, I am okay with a catheter. Why you want to poke me a needle each time? So I put a catheter, I am okay, I don't want to change. So a lot of other aspects, not only science but other aspects are also there. In our, in my practice I would see these two points that is willingness for dialysis and motivation of the relative and social support being very important in when we are counseling the elderly patient and their families for dialysis. So this study I have taken is a DOPS 3 trial and this is the one of the largest uh, uh, hemodialysis population which has been audited and practice pattern has been seen and this slide shows the various countries which were involved and the distribution of the patients on hemodialysis. So uh, their age group and uh, there were 16 to 40 percent patient of more than 75 years age group prevalent population in the uh, hemodialysis in various countries. So elderly population is definitely there and is going to rise. So if you, uh, in this study, 8161 in center hemodialysis patients data was audited and this uh, table is showing you the vascular access distribution of more than 75 year age group patients. And if you see, first column is Europe, then Australia, Japan and then North America. So most of the uh, areas are showing a large amount of vascular access being AV fistula. In Europe, 68% with 23% palm cats. Australia, 80% AV fistula, 10% graft, 6% palm cat. Japan, 91% fistulas. No catheters, just few patients having graft. And North America, 44% only fistula, 31% permanent catheters, and 23% graft. 
So what is the difference? It is a practice pattern different. I don't think that body physiology will be so different to allow so many AV fistula in Japanese. But definitely this study has documented that the Japanese patients had a best outcome and best quality of life and survival. So definitely fistula are good for the patient in long term. So what is actually, what, why the fistula is uh, maybe difficult in elderly? What happens when you make a fistula? So we need to understand this basic physiology. Once we create a fistula, there is an increase in cardiac output by 20% and this will occur within minutes, within an hour. And the peripheral resistance falls, that also occurs within minute to hours. So these are the two major changes. Some patients you will find that if patient has a lot of blood pressure medicine, his blood pressure control may improve actually once you make a fistula because the peripheral resistance goes down. And there are subsequent over next one to two weeks some changes in the stroke volume, heart rate, the sympathetic nervous system, even the renin goes down and circulating blood volume increases. So the, what you create is a increased cardiac contractility and hyperdynamic circulation. And if a patient, elderly patient has a poor cardiac function, so this can be damaging. He may not be able to increase the cardiac output that much to perfuse the vessels. So a radial, normal radial artery may have a 25 to 50 ml per minute flow. So increase it to 500 ml or 600 ml flow, the arterial wall has to expand or be uh, accommodative of that much increased flow and the heart should be able to pump. So these are the basic physiological factors which may be adverse in elderly and he may not be able to have a successful outcome. It's not moving actually. There's a vasculopathy in elderly. So this, this was done two years back. What we did was that when a patient went for AV fistula, we thought why not we take out a sample of the artery wall and try to correlate with the PTH level, vitamin D level and biochemical and clinical parameter and see what we find. So uh, we took up this project where we did around 65 patients. We took out the radial or the brachial arterial wall sample at the time of AV fistula formation and processed it. Uh, there was a routine processing, five micron cuts were taken, the intimal, medial and intimal medial thickness, adventitia thickness, calcification, fibrosis, all were studied. Uh, so uh, what we could find find in that was if I took a subset of that of the radial artery uh, samples and divided as per the age if more than 60 year and less than 60 year age and we analyzed so we could find that definitely the patients who are elderly have more calcification and secondly their intimal medial thickness is also slightly more as compared to younger patients but we also found that the age of the patient and the PTH levels were independent risk factors for the high intimal thickness. And you know that is intimal thickness is very important in subsequently uh, to have a successful fistula and with time if the intimal thickness worsens there, there is an early stenosis or failure of fistula. So uh, if we see the AV access, the AV fistula in elderly, uh, what problems we would face? Suppose we make the fistula, it has been found in studies that maybe only 50 to 60 percent of these patients will be able to use that fistula in their lifetime. So while making a fistula in elderly, the, we should see the life expectancy, it should be at least more than one year. There is increased primary failure rate to the tune of 37 percent versus 23 percent in younger persons. There is a double risk of non-maturation even after six months increased time to maturation and the patient ultimately may not want to go for dialysis and at the time of cannulation also there can be problems of bleeding, bruising which are much more than a younger person. If we see graft in elderly, so in graft there is one advantage that you can actually make it much, uh, very close to the time of initiation of dialysis so that you will have uh, more functioning grafts and less intervention will be required. Even two, after three weeks of putting up a graph, you can start the dialysis. So it can be made much closer to the point of ESRD. And in the short, short term, one to two years, maybe the incidence of infection or latency is not such an issue as compared to a fistula. So dialysis catheters also have a definite place in elderly. 
though it, it is ridden with exit site infection, tunnel infection, blood stream infection, but then certain situations you cannot actually do away without catheters, or maybe uh, they will be uh, of choice. Like it is a very short life expectancy. If patient is waiting for the fistula to mature, patient has a significant vascular disease or a heart failure, and uh, if uh, the patient preference, patient may not want to do away with the already having a catheter, he may not want to change over to a fistula. So this is a recent study published where they have seen the outcome of elderly patients with pre-dialysis, vascular access creation. In this 3,400 patients, elderly patients more than 70 years, who underwent AV fistula and AV graft before they were initiated on dialysis, they were followed up. And it was found that if, even after two years of follow-up, only around two-third of patients actually initiated dialysis. But those who initiated, only 50% could, could use their AV fistula or graft. So that means in spite of all your effort of making an early AV fistula or graft for these elderly patients, only 50% actually benefited over a period of two years. So that is actually a problem in the elderly patients. Catheter dependence at dialysis initiation was more common in patients receiving pre-dialysis AV fistula than compared to AV graft because the author says that they could judge the time of uh, initiation of dialysis better because graft would be start functioning in two to three weeks and therefore if they made a graft there were more chances that they will be using that graft for only for initiation. So another uh, study is from the USRDS data where more than one lakh incident hemodialysis patient of greater than 67 year age group received first access fistula 21,000 patient three to around 3,400 received a graft and 90,000 more than 90,000 patients had a catheter. So actually catheter was being commonly used in elderly patients in this study. And it was documented that the mortality increased with a hazard ratio of 1.7 with the use of catheters when compared to fistula. So catheters definitely have a poorer outcome. And this is the graph which the author has shown in the different age group, 67 to 79 year age group, you can clearly see that the catheter in any age group, the, the, this, this graph, second graph is 80 to 89, and the third graph is more than 90 year age group. In all of them, we can see that the survival probability decreases with time, much more with the catheter as compared to graft or fistula, and graft or fistula almost are same. So I also tried to audit the data in our center, in three subsequent days of dialysis at our center last week, I tried to document the patient vascular access we have used in elderly patients. So there were total 147 patient, adult patients with, with negative viral markers undergoing dialysis with the mean age of 49 years. And I split the population into less than 60 years, that is 102 patients, and more than 60 years, 45 patients. Most of our patients were on AV fistula, even the elderly patients. 91% was on AV fistula and there were double lumen jugular catheters in around 10 to 15%. Two patients were on graft in younger patient dialysis and one from that, while no elderly patient had a graft or a from that. At this point, we should understand that the vascular access has a cost also. And in India, any treatment without counseling for cost is not possible at all because more than 50% of our patients are actually paying from their pocket. So if we see a normal double lumen jugular catheter would cost around 5,000 rupees, fistula 15,000, a graft maybe 80,000, and a palm cath of around 30,000. So if I consider a patient elderly or otherwise, then I have to tell him the cost. And seeing this cost, maybe a fistula would be more preferable to the patient than a graft. So if you see the various aspects of these three vascular accesses, survival, infection, hospitalization, intervention cost, on all these factors, the AV fistula actually stands out uh, to be beneficial to the patient. So uh, to conclude, I would say that in elderly patients, there is a significant proportion of our dialysis uh, population is going to be elderly. The fistula provides the best outcome and can be placed with least expense and complication rate, but risk of maturation failure can be there. And if you carefully actually plan the site of fistula, maybe more, more uh, use of proximal, uh, guided by your vascular anatomy, 
um, better decision making and maybe more functional fistulas will be there. Then graft can be placed close to dialysis initiation and may serve as a catheter sparing access. Uh, but definitely, ultimately, the process of choosing a vascular access needs to be individualized in elderly depending on the health status and their preferences. Thank you.